Hello and welcome to Community Church. It is so good to have you with us today. Whether you're online or in person, you're super welcome and we hope you have a great day. But before we get in with the rest of the service, here's what's coming up at Community Church. Our 10 days of prayer are still going strong, so make sure you check the app or the website to see how we can pray together more these next few days. After the success of our first men's breakfast in a while, we had a great time. We have another one planned Saturday 10th of June 2023, 8am to 11.30am. Make sure you book in details on our app or on the website. We have the church family meeting Thursday 22nd of June at 7.30pm. Now this is for recognised church members, so if you're one of them, you should have received an email. If you're not a member yet and would like to be, please speak to a life group leader or a church leader and they will start taking you through the process. This is a little saver date for you, Saturday the 8th of July, 2pm till 4pm. We have an event for married and engaged couples. More details will be coming out on this event soon, but please get it in your diary because this event will be a real blessing and support for marriages in the church. Thank you so much for continuing to give your tithes and offerings. If you'd like to do so today, you can do so on our app or on our church website. Details are on the screen now. That's all the notices for today. Next week we'll be meeting in our separate sites, that's Chafford 100, South Ockenden, Chadwell St Mary and online. If you belong to our Chafford site, there will be an opportunity to meet in your life groups, so please check with your life group leader if that is the case. If you've missed any of the notices or just want to catch up a bit further, please download the app, check out our socials and have a great day. Well, welcome to Community Church Online as we gather people from all over the world to be with us uh, at this time so we can worship together, we can pray together, we can open the word together and we can draw near to God. I want to pray that the Lord will be with you wherever you are listening to this just now and that the Spirit will come upon you and minister to you uh, as you spend time drawing near to God. Let us pray and then we'll uh, start with some sung worship. Lord, we thank you that you are ever present, Lord, and wherever we are, whatever we are facing, uh, whatever our situation, Lord, you are with us. So Lord, I pray, whoever's listening to this just now, that your Holy Spirit will minister to them, will be with them, will just bring a blessing to them as they share in this time together. Lord, be glorified, we pray. And Lord, Holy Spirit, come and minister to each one in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy our time together. Worthy of our praise. Amen. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the ancient of days.
During the next worship song, we will have an opportunity for you to give to the work of the Lord through Community Church. Uh, as we uh, take this next song, there will be a QR code on the screen. Uh, please just scan that in and uh, give your offering to the Lord and it will go towards the work of the church in the local community and into the nations. God bless you as you give to the Lord just now. You are good, you are good, when there's nothing good in me. You are love, you are love, on display for all to see. You are light, you are light, when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. You are peace, you are peace, when my fear is crippling. You are good, you are true, even in my wondering. You are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I sing. You are life, you are life, in you death has lost its thing.
We're going to open the Word of God together. We're in Philippians at the moment. Last week we started uh, with the beginning uh, for chapter 1 and just a little introduction, just saying uh, what Philippi was, the Roman colony that it was there. And what would happen is about 10 years before this, uh, Paul had visited uh, Philippi um, and encouraged uh, the believers there. Um, and now he was uh, in prison again and he was writing to them because they had sent a gift to Paul through Epaphroditus. And so he's sending back this letter uh, to thank them for their gift and updating them on his current situation. This is a, a, a letter of friendship, a, a way of writing in that day and age, uh, a friendship letter, and it follows that sort of of pattern. But Paul focuses on Jesus, he focuses on the gospel uh, and uh, in, in the first part we looked at uh, he said that, uh, that they were partners with him in the gospel. This was absolutely key for Paul, uh, everything was about the gospel and he encouraged them because of their partnership with him uh, since the first day he says in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we come to the second part of our preaching series. If you missed last week, you can catch up online. But we're going to read just now from chapter 1, starting at verse 12 through to verse 18. Now, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here for the defence of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Amen. Lord, I pray that you will help us by your Holy Spirit uh, to glean from this passage, Lord, your truths, uh, understanding from you, uh, Lord, and Lord, your Holy Spirit will help us to put these things into our life so that we may follow your ways and your ways alone. Amen. So here we see Paul uh, in prison. Um, but celebrating gospel advance. And I want to say this is unstoppable gospel advance. No matter what the circumstances or others are doing, what opposition, the gospel will advance. And here we see um, in verse 12, he says, I want you to know, brothers and sisters. So he's addressing the church in Philippi as a family, brothers and sisters, family language adopted by the Father, God's children. And, uh, and that's who we become as we, if we decide that we want to follow Jesus, if we commit to his ways, if we repent of our sin, if we decide that Jesus is our saviour and our king, Jesus then reconciles us to God and the Father, God, adopts us into his family so we become brothers and sisters and it's a language used throughout the New Testament uh, for the church and Paul is using this language now I want you to know brothers and sisters you are you're my family you're my brothers and sisters and then he starts to explain his situation what has happened to him um, uh, and what has happened to him if we read from verse 7 um, it says um, it's right for me to feel like it's about this, since I, in my heart, for whether I am in chains. So here we see that he's in chains in verse 7. Verse 13, he says um, that he's with the palace guard, he's in chains. Verse 14, I'm in chains. All the way through, he's talking about his imprisonment, he, 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 that he's in chains 
for the gospel. And so he, he's saying, this is where I am. This is my situation. He's updating them that again, he's in prison. But what he's saying here is that his suffering and his imprisonment has served to advance the gospel. Now, some may struggle with this a little bit because um, we, we live in a, a generation uh, where we're thinking more about ourselves than the bigger picture. And it's, even in the church, sometimes we see the, the health and wealth and prosperity teaching that would come in. And, and we would try and understand how can suffering and imprisonment be good? How can anything come of that which is of any good? Look where I am and our prayers, God, get me out of here, get me out of here. But Paul saw this in a different way. He said that the imprisonment had served to advance the gospel. We need to understand that, that the new covenant that we're in with Jesus is not the same as the old covenant. Jesus actually said, my kingdom is not of this world. And Jesus himself, if we want to follow his ways, he was born, although he was rich in, in heaven and, and, and was, the, it was over all things, he left that behind and became poor. He was born into poverty. He had no place to rest his head. He relied on the generosity of others, mainly women, uh, to support his needs. He was criticised. He was opposed. He was flogged. And eventually he died a criminal's death. Now, we would say that that life is a, a life of, of failure uh, and of poverty. And, and where's the blessing of God upon that? But of course, this is Jesus. And we can see the blessing of God upon his life in all that he did, the way that he spoke, the way that he taught, the way that he loved. We can see that this is a, a blessed life. And yet we are concerned mainly with riches and comfort and worldly achievements. Some people uh, are money first, job first, or education first, success first people. Uh, but, but Paul here is Jesus first and the advance of the gospel. He had a big picture idea. And we look at Romans 8, 28, a famous verse that we would all uh, know. Uh, and we know for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. So, so here we're told that all things, now we, we tend to, to think, well, I, I want the good things, Lord. But actually the Bible says all things, good and bad, will work together for good. And what we're looking for usually in that is, is our good, for, for my benefit. And actually, Paul is actually a good example. He's, no, this is for the benefit of Jesus and his kingdom and the advance of the gospel. If we were to look at Luke 21, this is Jesus speaking in verses 12 to 18 and uh, talking to his disciples. But before all this, they will lay hands on you and persecute you. They will deliver you to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors, and all on account of my name. This will result in you being witnesses to them. But make your mind up not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves, for I will give you the words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. All men will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. By standing firm, you will gain life. And so here's a, a, a manifesto, if you like, for, for, for Jesus saying, you know, come and follow me. You'll be hated. You will be thrown out by your families. You know, you will be flogged. You will be imprisoned. And some of you are going to die. Who wants to come on that basis? And this is what Jesus offers us. You know, the, the, the New Testament is different from the Old Testament. We are called in all things to believe that the good of God, his kingdom and the advance of his gospel will continue. And Paul here was in prison and he didn't know whether he was going to live or die. He, he didn't know what was going to happen to him. 
He was in prison. In fact, later on, when we come to this next week, uh, he says, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. You know, he, he was content in his position and he was assured of his eternal life. He rejoices because the gospel is be, be in advance and the good that Paul is looking out of his life when all things work together for good, the, the good that Paul is looking for is that the gospel is continuing to be advanced. And in verse 6, this was last week when we looked at this, uh, we, we, we talking, verse 5 says, because of your partnership in the gospel, it says from the first day until now, see that, that, that progression there, being confident in this, that he who began the good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. You see, God is going to complete his work with the gospel. What he has started with the gospel being proclaimed, he will complete. And Jesus says that the gospel will go to all nations before he returns. Every people group will hear about Jesus. And this verse 6 talks about the completion of the gospel in the world. I, but also I think the gospel in our own lives. So I think one of the reasons that Paul was confident in his position in prison is because the gospel had affected him so much. The work that God had begun on that road to Damascus was being completed in him through the gospel day by day. And so we need to apply the gospel to our own lives and take part in spreading the gospel to others. Paul believed that the only message for the broken and fallen in this world is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So in verse 13, we see how this happened. How did the advance of the gospel continue even when he was in prison? Verse 13 said, as a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for the gospel, the whole imperial guard, the whole palace guard and everybody else associated with Paul's imprisonment knew that he was there because he was a follower of Jesus. His chains, his imprisonment were all about Jesus and the gospel of Jesus. If we are in Christ, then we will share in his sufferings. And so Jesus is with us and we are with Jesus. In verse 10, we'll get to this when we get to chapter 3, verse 10. It says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. And so the guard knew that he was suffering because he was joining with Christ in suffering. Jesus was with him and the reason that he was in prison is because he was a follower of Jesus and proclaiming Christ wherever he went. And the reason it was the whole imperial guard because they would have been on four hour shifts and, and every time a new guard would come in, uh, Paul would be explaining I'm, I'm about Jesus and they would hear about Jesus and, and he would be able to share the gospel with all of them because they all had to have a turn in guarding him. And, and this is something about um, uh, the fact that the, Paul took the opportunity to make sure that the whole of his environment, the whole of the people he was connected to at that time, heard the gospel. There was no, no one left. You know, everybody had heard the gospel. And uh, surely uh, uh, Paul would have wanted to be free to do that. But as he was in prison, he just made sure in this place where God has put me now, I am going to make sure that everybody knows about Jesus, that no one misses out on this opportunity to hear the good news. Verse 14, we see uh, Paul would have loved to have been out there going from town to town preaching the gospel as he had been doing. But he sees the bigger picture because of his imprisonment because of his boldness and his peace while he's in prison other believers were now speaking more boldly about Jesus they, they had a confidence in God because what they had gained and seen in Paul's imprisonment and so in all of these things 
Paul saw, even though I'm here in chains and suffering with Jesus, the bigger picture is the gospel is still being advanced. The gospel is still being proclaimed. That's the big picture that we really need to get hold of. It's not about us. It's not about our lives. It's about Jesus. It's about his kingdom. It's all about him. This unstoppable gospel of ours. That's the good that we want to come out of every situation in our lives. And of course, in verse 15 to 18, we see that you know, Paul then talks about people that were preaching the gospel and he splits them into two camps very clearly. Firstly, those preaching to advance the interests of Christ who pro preach from a place of goodwill and love. And secondly, those who are preaching Jesus out of selfish ambition and actually also wanting to further afflict Paul to advance their own interests. And, and you can see these two camps, you know, some are preaching Jesus because they love Jesus and they just want Jesus to be glorified uh, and it's all about him. And there are others that are trying to get the advantage over Paul while he's in prison, to, to get one up on him, to cause him more harm and are preaching Jesus just for selfish interests and their own advancement. And interestingly, Paul makes this statement. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. Now this may not be the response that we were expecting, you know. Uh, surely Paul should criticise those that are, are trying to do him down and, and try to get one over him and, and trying to advance their own interest. Surely he should be criticising those who are preaching from impure motives. And uh, in fact, he doesn't do that. What he does is, I rejoice that Jesus is being proclaimed. Now, I don't think that he's endorsing their motives. I, I don't think that at all. But he rejoices because what is most important is not their motives but that the gospel is being preached that Jesus is being made known and he's got such a confidence in the gospel of Jesus Christ that even men with impure motives preaching Jesus the Holy Spirit can use that for the advancement of the gospel the gospel is powerful even with people that proclaim it that are weak impure selfish and trying to get advancement of themselves, if Jesus is being proclaimed and the gospel is being proclaimed, we need to know that the gospel is powerful. The gospel will advance, the gospel will continue. There's nothing going to stop the gospel of Jesus Christ going to every single people group in the world. So what does this mean for us? First of all, um, what are we prepared to suffer for the advance of the gospel are we are we prepared to say lord whatever you want as long as you are glorified and there's gospel advance to the nations i'm here do with me what you will is that our position if whatever your situation, uh, you know, there might be some listening to this are sick, uh, some in hospital even, uh, and, and, and you say, well, I've not got the opportunity. No, no Paul was in prison, prison and his, his heart was to anybody in my sphere of influence at this time, I want them to hear the gospel. Who is at this time in your sphere of influence? Wherever God has put you. You know, what, what, how are you going to make sure that everybody that you come into contact with hears the gospel of Jesus Christ? And then how do we deal with opposition to the gospel? Do we let it weigh us down or do we see it as an opportunity for further gospel advance? You know, do we see, okay, these people are opposing us, but at least we're getting some conversation. At least Jesus is being talked about. At least there's an opportunity here to share Jesus with these people? What are our motives? Why do we do the things we do? Is it out of selfish ambition or is it 
for the love of God and the advancement of his kingdom. Suffering and persecution is a big thing in the New Testament. We see it and we'll come to it when we come to chapter 3. And just want to compare how Paul and those emboldened by his imprisonment understand it to, to how we see it today. You know, we read, we read stories of persecutions of brothers and sisters and, and we, we, we want to pray for them and bless them. But does, does that inspire us to speak out more boldly? And courageously, just as the others here saw Peter in prison, we're going to go and, and proclaim the gospel boldly. Or does it make us go into fear? And we stop and we, we hide. You know, what is our reaction to suffering and persecution? We don't face much of that here in the UK. We might face a little bit of opposition, a little bit of challenge, um, but we don't get persecuted. But one day that might happen. One day we might find that we have to decide, are we standing for Jesus or are we going to follow the world? And if we're standing for Jesus, we might have to be prepared for imprisonment, to be thrown out of our jobs, to be thrown out of our homes even, if you've got uh, young children that, that come to faith. You know, we, what is our position on suffering and persecution? Are we ready to join with Jesus and suffer for the sake of the gospel. And then finally, do we see the big picture? You might be suffering, you might be struggling, you might be going through hard times, uh, you, you, but have you seen the bigger picture that through this, all things are going to work together for good? That Jesus will be glorified, the gospel will be proclaimed. What is it? that brings you joy. Paul's joy, he rejoiced in the fact that the gospel was being preached. And that even when he saw impure motives, he said, and because of this, I rejoice. What are you rejoicing in? What brings you joy? Is it the gospel of Jesus Christ? Is it others hearing the gospel? Is it others being saved? Do you believe in the big picture? That the gospel will go to every people group. And are you willing to suffer for the sake of the gospel and to put Jesus first in everything in your life? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for uh, this example of Paul, who, whether he was in prison or whether he was free in the city, uh, whether he was shipwrecked or whether he was being flogged, everything that he did was the, for Jesus and for the sake of the gospel. Lord, give us this big picture. Give us this big vision of the accomplishment of gospel advance to every people group in the world. And Lord, may we be prepared to do anything so that this will be accomplished. So Lord, Holy Spirit, help us. Convict us, Lord, of the areas in our life that need to change. And Lord, may we be Jesus first people, gospel first people. Lord, may the gospel complete in us that work which you have started. And Lord, the start of the work of the gospel going to our generation, Lord, we pray that it will come to completion. And Lord, that you will, by your grace, use us to play our part to tell others about Jesus. And Lord, may we rejoice in your goodness, in your faithfulness, and Lord, even in our suffering, may we know that you are with us, strengthening us and upholding us. And Lord, give us a, a vision of our future glory, that uh, to, to live is Christ, to die is gain. So help us, Holy Spirit, help us to live for you, help us to live for others, and to, connect, and to connect with them and, and share the gospel with them. And Jesus be glorified in our lives. Be Jesus be glorified in your church through everything we do. For your name's sake we pray. Amen. God bless you and I uh, hope that you're encouraged from this 
chapter uh, in Philippians and be with us next time as we continue this in, into the last part of chapter one. If you want to connect with us, please do so. Connect with the website. We'd love uh, to talk to you and help you as you follow Jesus. God bless you and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you for joining with us as we've been together online. Um, I pray that God will be with you this week. I just want to pray God's blessing upon you, his peace, his grace, his love, wherever you are. May God be with you and may he use you fruitfully as you minister for Jesus this week. God bless you and hopefully see you again soon. Thank you.